Televangelism has a strange history, and a big part of that comes from Jim Baker. Alongside his former wife, Tammy Faye, Jim rose to prominence hosting the seminal Christian program, The PTL Club. At the height of that show's success, Jim and Tammy Faye were making enough money they were able to create their own amusement park, Heritage USA. Though numerous controversies in the 80s caused the Baker's reign to come to an end, Jim is still on the air today in a diminished capacity. Join Facts First as we explore what happened to Jim Baker after PTL. Jim Baker was born January 2, 1940, in Muskegon, Michigan. As a young adult, he attended North Central University, which is a notable Bible college in Minneapolis. While there, he met a woman named Tammy Faye LaValle. In 1961, they married. North Central University frowned upon its students getting married, so Jim and Tammy Faye were kicked out of the school after tying the knot. They began working in children's ministries at local churches and eventually caught the attention of televangelist Pat Robertson. Robertson immediately took a liking to Jim and Tammy Faye. He hired them to begin working for his channel, the Christian Broadcasting Network, or CBN. Pat hired Jim and Tammy Faye in 1966. At the time, his channel was nowhere near the success it was soon to become thanks to the superstar couple. The Baker's first contribution to CBN was the children's show Come On Over. It was a variety program that featured various sketches involving puppets that were performed by Jim and Tammy Faye. After the show became a massive success, Jim managed to talk Pat into giving him his own talk show, reminiscent of late-night programs of the time. That show was The 700 Club, which has long since become CBN's most successful and longest-running show. Jim and Tammy Faye had turned CBN into a major success for Pat Robertson, but the couple wanted something of their own. In 1974, the couple branched off from CBN to develop the PTL satellite network. With the help of local affiliates, this station began broadcasting the Baker's own show, The PTL Club, in 1976. The PTL Club was essentially a clone of The 700 Club, but with more direct emphasis on Jim and Tammy Faye. It was filmed out of a studio Jim had built called Heritage Village. As the PTL Club became more and more successful, Jim expanded Heritage Village into a full-blown amusement park. That was named Heritage USA, and it opened in 1978. At the height of the PTL Club's success, the Bakers were rumored to have been taking in over a million dollars in donations from fans per week. However, their success came crashing down in the 80s due to two separate scandals that destroyed Jim's reputation. The first of the two scandals that destroyed them involved allegations of sexual misconduct. In 1987, Jim was accused of behaving inappropriately with a woman named Jessica Hahn, who had worked as a church secretary. Jessica alleged that not only had Jim molested her under the pretense of hiring her as a babysitter, but she had been molested by other members of his operation, too. It was revealed Jim had paid Jessica a sum of nearly $300,000 to keep her allegations to herself. Once this was revealed, Jim was immediately disgraced. The televangelist went on to claim he had engaged in an extramarital affair with Jessica, but the sex was consensual. Whether consensual or not, the news proved damning upon the reputation of the supposed Christian. After the disgrace of the sexual misconduct allegations and subsequent payoff came to light, Jim stepped down from his role on the PTL Club. He hired the Reverend Jerry Falwell to take over for him for the time being, with the intention of coming back once things had cooled down. But things didn't turn out the way he had been planning. Jerry eventually cut Jim out of the program entirely, and the network later filed for bankruptcy under Jerry's control. After losing the PTL satellite network, the PTL club, Heritage USA, and his reputation as an honest man, it may have seemed like Jim Baker had hit rock bottom. But things were about to get a good deal worse. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Around the time that the sexual misconduct allegations against Jim Baker came to life, the televangelist became engaged in another controversy that eventually saw the influential religious leader put behind bars. It came about from annual memberships Jim had sold to his followers under false pretenses. From 1984 to 1987, Jim sold lifetime memberships to Heritage USA that entitled whoever purchased them to an annual three-night stay at one of several luxury hotels that were supposedly going to be built on the premises. Not only was there never a hotel built, the entire park was shut down in 1989. This meant that the people who purchased these $1,000 memberships had eventually paid for just a few trips. 
there were apparently multiple tens of thousands of lifetime memberships that had been sold to Jim's followers. In 1988, Jim was charged and found guilty on 24 counts related to fraud and conspiracy, and was subsequently sentenced to 45 years in prison and a $500,000 fine. But Jim appealed. He was able to get the case brought before the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit. Though the court upheld the verdict that Jim had been guilty of his crimes, they took issue with the judge's sentencing. The judge had made a remark regarding his own personal faith, which gave the courts reason to believe the judge may have imposed excessive punishment upon Jim vindictively. As a result of the appeal, Jim's sentence was reduced from 45 years to 8 years. He served only 5 years of the sentence before being let out on parole thanks to a heartfelt letter Jim's son had written to the parole board. He was released in 1994 and promised he would never return to his fraudulent ways. However, he still owed the IRS around $6 million. Jim and Tammy had two children during their marriage, daughter Tammy Sue and son Jamie. Jamie was the one who wrote the letter to the parole board. This was despite the fact his parents had acrimoniously split in 1992 in the wake of the misconduct allegations. In 1998, Jim remarried to a woman named Lori Beth Graham. Lori was a former televangelist herself, and the two were married within 50 days of meeting. Since becoming married, the couple has adopted five children. With the help of Lori, Jim started a new show in 2003. Leaving behind his old brand, the new show was simply called The Jim Baker Show. Along with his new show, Jim seems to have developed a new interpretation of theology. His new preaching comes with a much heavier emphasis on the apocalypse. Instead of simple donations and memberships, his new show continues to profit by selling its audience survivalist supplies. These supplies are meant to come in handy during the apocalypse, which Jim claims is liable to occur at any moment. The Jim Baker Show is still on the air, and Jim recently found himself entangled in a completely new web of controversy amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. Jim had been selling colloidal silver supplements on his show for some time. When COVID-19 began taking up airtime in early 2020, he jumped at the opportunity to claim his colloidal silver supplements could be used to cure the virus. In March of 2020, he was ordered by the Attorney General of New York to stop saying his supplements could cure COVID, and he was also sent a letter by the Food and Drug Administration. But the most devastating impact came from the Attorneys General of Arkansas and Missouri, who both filed lawsuits against Jim for the claims. Credit card companies began prohibiting him from receiving transactions, and numerous channels began making the decision to stop airing The Jim Baker Show. Perhaps from stress, Jim suffered from a stroke in May that caused him to step down from his role on the program, but he recovered and returned to the show in July. The lawsuits came to their conclusion in June. As a result, Jim was prohibited from making any more claims about his colloidal silver supplements being able to cure any disease or condition, and the televangelist was forced to pay out settlements totaling $157,000 to anyone who had purchased the supplements in question during the time Jim had been making the false claims. Now it's time to hear from you. Comment down below to share if you think Jim deserves to still be on TV after all he's done. And be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.